So let's work through a couple of examples for how to write chemical formulas from ions and from names. The first thing we're going to do is if we know the chemical name, for example, sodium chloride, what we would want to do is make sure that we have a periodic table handy and we're going to find um, the metal first. So sodium is Na and it is a plus one charge. Chloride is a nonmetal and it has a negative one charge. Remember the nonmetals right now, we are only using that very top charge. They're all going to be anions. So what we have here is Na plus one and Cl minus one. Now the goal is to make these neutral. So if we have one of each, because this is a plus one and a minus one, we just need one of each. And so this formula just becomes NaCl. Second example, magnesium chloride. If we go to the periodic table and look up magnesium, we see that the formula is Mg plus two. And remember, we're always putting the metals first. You'll always see the metal written first in the name. You'll always see the non-metal written second in the name. Um, formula is true. The same thing is true for formulas. So chloride, again, we know chloride. We just worked with it, so that's a minus one. Now, one of each of these is not going to be neutral. So really, what we need is another negative one ion because the plus two will cancel out with the minus one and the minus one because together, that's a minus two. So this formula is not just written as MgClCl because that just gets a little cumbersome. So we would write this as Mg subscript one, which we're not gonna write because subscripts of one are understood. We have two chlorides, so we're gonna include that as, um, as a subscript. So MgCl2 indicates that there's two chlorides to match up to this one magnesium. Third example is Al aluminum chloride. And if we go to the periodic table, we see that aluminum is a plus three charge. So that's Al plus three. We know chloride's a minus one. So again, to match up to this total positive three charge, we have to have three of these chlorides. And that's becoming super annoying to write, so we are going to um, abbreviate that with a subscript of three to indicate that we need three of these chlorides to match up to, these, to this one aluminum. It works the same way uh, when we have um, uh, an anion that's something else other than a minus one. So let's take a look at sodium oxide. Okay, we're gonna look at sodium oxide. And for sodium oxide, we're gonna see that sodium is a plus one charge. So that's Na plus one. Oxide is oxygen, so it's O minus two. And so here we can see that uh, we're gonna need more than one of these sodium plus ones because our total negative charge is minus two. So what we need really is two sodiums, each at a plus one. So again, that's too cumbersome. So to indicate that we need two sodiums, we're gonna put a subscript there to show two sodiums matching up with that one oxygen. Let's take a look at number, our example number five. For this, we've got uh, sodium nitride. Sodium nitride. Uh, so here we have, we know sodium is a plus one charge. Nitride is nitrogen. We're gonna take that charge from the very top, so it's a minus three. So that's N minus three. And here we see we're going to need three of these sodium plus one ions to match up to this one minus three ion. So we would indicate that with a subscript of three to show that we need one, two, three sodium ions, and we just need this one nitride ion, okay? So that's the reason why we need multiple ions uh, in, an, in an ionic compound. Uh, but let's take a look at maybe a faster way to, to do these, okay? So I'm gonna look at uh, a sixth example here. And for this, I'm not gonna start with the name, I'm just gonna give you the ion, right? So this is iron plus three and chloride minus one. So when you have um, a quick way to do these formulas is the crisscross method. 
So what you do is you take the charge on one ion, that will become the subscript on the other ion. So chloride will have a three, a plus three in, as a subscript. And then the superscript on the chloride is gonna come over here and become the subscript on the iron. Once you drop and swap those numbers, what you now need to do is drop all charges, and this becomes Fe Cl3. So you drop all charges, and you if there's a one, you drop the one. So this becomes Fe Cl3. Now sometimes iron can be a plus two charge. Let's see what happens when we put that together with the chloride. So the two, again with the drop and swap, drop and swap. And so again, we dropped the numbers, we brought down the charges, but now the next step is to all charges are gonna disappear. And if there's a one, you make the one disappear. So this becomes FeCl subscript two. Let's take a look at a couple more examples and see what happens. Again, we're just going to start with ions for these examples. Example number eight, CO plus three and O minus two. So the crisscross, drop and swap. So plus three becomes the subscript on the oxygen, minus two becomes the subscript on the cobalt, and here we're going to drop any charges, so this becomes CO subscript two, O subscript three. Make sure in your cobalt that you write that, that O as a lowercase so that it's not confused for the element oxygen. Example nine, CA plus two and P minus three. Again, with the drop and swap, crisscross, drop and swap, take the negative three, becomes the subscript on the cation. Now, again, drop any charges, and we have a ratio of, for every three calciums, we're going to need two phosphides. All right, now let's take a look at something interesting that can happen. If I have calcium plus two and carbon minus four, when we drop and swap, we have a minus four on the calcium and a plus two on the carbon. So if we leave this as Ca4C2, the problem with this is this is an ionic compound and this needs to be the lowest ratio. So here's where you're gonna have to start watching for um, ratios that can be reduced. So four to two is a two to one. So this is a Ca2C1, but again, we're gonna drop that one because the ones are always on good. All right, let's try uh, problem number 11, Pb plus 4, O minus 2. Let's do the drop and swap. O gets a plus 4, Pb gets a minus 2. Drop all charges, we're not going to have any plus or minuses here, and so if we leave it at Pb2, O4, we see that that 2 to 4 can be reduced, so this becomes Pb, O, 2. All right, two more examples, and I'm gonna do them here at the very bottom of my page. So this is problem number 12. We've got Mn plus three and O minus two. Drop and swap. We've got a plus three down here and a minus two down here. Two to three is already reduced. So this is just Mn, drop those charges. So it's Mn two, O three. Last example we'll work through together is Ti plus three and P minus three. Crisscross, drop and swap. We've got a plus three on the phosphorus and a minus three on the titanium. So drop all charges. If we drop the charges, we have Ti3, P3, but of course a three to three is really a one to one. So this formula ends up being TiP. All right. These were some examples of how to write ionic compound formulas given the name and given the ions. All right, we'll see you back in the classroom.